Welcome back everybody to another video. And today we're checking out the Bogren Digital IRDX. But before we jump into the review, if you would like for me to mix your music, shoot me an email at divinemotherstudios at gmail.com with details of your project. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, guys, it's freaking here. I'm super excited. I've been waiting for this plugin to come out ever since it came on my radar. And if you guys don't know who Bogren Digital is, they are the makers of the MLC Sub-Zero 100 Amp Sim, which I reviewed on a previous video, which I'll link somewhere here. And they have finally released the IRDX Core, plugin, which is automatically included in all of their amp sims. And if you guys don't know what this is, it basically is supposed to just reintroduce speaker dynamic variation into any and all amp sims. So just a quick lesson here. In real life, the way a speaker cabinet works is that it moves and compresses and expands air at a very high rate, which when hitting our ears causes our brains to interpret that as sound and frequencies. And the problem with IRs according to Bogren Digital, is that they are a static snapshot of what that cabinet would be. So there's no dynamic variation. It's just a picture, essentially. And the issue that the IRDX attempts to resolve is that lack of speaker dynamics. So that is what IRDX is essentially supposed to be doing. I got three mixes for you guys. One symphonic death metal mix, one kind of a doom metal mix, and then one a technical death metal mix, all with varying guitar tones. I'll play each of those mixes for you with IRDX bypassed and unbypassed so we can check out each different tone and what IRDX is gonna do in different circumstances. So jumping right into it, let's start with the symphonic death metal mix. Just make sure that you guys are listening on a very good pair of headphones or a very good pair of speakers to be able to perceive the very subtle effect that this is gonna do. So I just bypassed the IRDX at the very end there. And I don't know about you guys, but to me, it almost sounded like the guitars dropped out a little bit. They kind of collapsed actually in terms of the stereo imaging, but definitely they lost a little bit of, you know, something there, a texture, I guess. I'm not really sure. I can't put my finger on it, but it definitely feels different. I can't say that it sounds too different, but it definitely feels different. It almost feels like a little bit less 3D, you know, it may be my brain playing tricks on me or Bogger Digital's marketing is getting to my head, but that's definitely what I'm feeling here. Now, what I love about this plugin is that it's a very simple interface. It's just a knob, in and out, and then normal and intense. Now, from what I can understand from the manual is normal is just their normal algorithm and intense is exactly what it sounds like. It's just more of what the algorithm is gonna do at a higher level of intensity. So let's just quickly solo the guitars and check out what it's doing. And then I'll switch kind of back and forth between normal and intense. Now to my ears, there's definitely some like high end kind of being added, some texture on the high end. And the low end was particularly interesting. There's some wizardry with the low mids. They sound more, I don't know, like just kind of what a speaker would do in real life. Kind of like have the low end compressed when you drive a speaker, but in a way that sounds good. Not like just low mid compression from like a compressor or anything, but like actual like speaker compression, which sounds good. Now let's take a listen to that again with intense mode on. So in intense mode, it's just more of the effect. I'm also starting to hear a little bit of actual speaker distortion on the edges here, especially on the high end. And that's actually what happens in real life. When you really drive a speaker, you know, you do get its natural compression from, you know, that extra amount of energy being slammed into the front end of that speaker. So that's really cool that they were able to model that. Again, it doesn't sound like EQ to me. I don't know. I 
I don't know, it just sounds a little bit more lively, I guess. It doesn't have kind of like that flat kind of thing. Now this was the Gojira plugin that I used for this mix. And uh, the way Bogger Digital recommends that you use this plugin is at the end of your amp sims, but before any of your processing. So like if you got an EQ or like a compressor or any kind of saturation, you know, mixing kind of stuff going on after the amp sim, this would kind of sit in the middle. So you got your amp sim, Bogger and Digital's IRDX technology, and then everything else under that. So that's how I have set this up per their manual, and that is the results that I'm getting with it. All right, so now we're moving on to the Doom Metal mix, and this has slightly different variables than the other mix. The other mix was just a traditional left and right guitar, you know, very standard kind of death metal tone. This is a quad tracked mix with a very thick sounding guitar tone. And so I'll play the mix with you guys with IRDX and then I'm going to bypass it as it's going along. And just you guys let me know in the comments if you guys are able to tell whether it's bypassed or unbypassed. So this one to me was definitely way more subtle than the previous one. I feel like because this is the STL tonality plugin or the tone hub, excuse me, the way STL models their amp sims is that they actually also take into account the cabinet and speaker. So unlike other amp sims, you can't actually take out the microphone or the speaker cabinet. It's, it's baked into the guitar tone. So I think because they have that extra layer of recreation or amp modeling in there, it's a little bit more subtle when added to those plugins. However, it is still there when I was bypassing it and unbypassing it. To me, at the very minimum, it sounded like it was just losing a little bit of 3D-ness. That's really it. It wasn't so much the characteristics of the high end or the low end. It was more of just spatial kind of things, uh, you know, the way it sat into the mix as a whole. It kind of just sounded a little bit more wider and a little bit more 3D. That's really the only way I can think about it. Let's go ahead and try that with the intense mode on. Okay, so on intense mode, I definitely hear it way more, especially that 3D spatialness kind of going on. The tone is definitely not changing. What I'm definitely hearing is like a separation and a more cohesive guitar tone than I would if it was just by itself the STL tonality plugin. Let's go ahead and check that out with it soloed. So definitely for this mix, it's not a tonality thing, it's more of a feeling kind of thing. And I actually really like the way it sounds in the mix on intense mode than normal mode. Normal mode was a little too subtle, but in intense mode, it sounds fantastic. Now they do have this knob that you can increase the effect to very extreme levels. So let's just put it on intense mode and then just crank this up and hear how that sounds. So, you know, it's still very subtle in my opinion, even on intense mode with the knob all the way cranked up. So it's a very interesting plugin. I do like what it's doing. Okay, so moving on to our final mix here, we have the technical death metal mix that I mixed for a client a couple months ago. This is where I heard the effect 
almost immediately right out of the bat. The other two were a little bit more subtle, but this one was the one where I, it made the biggest difference. And I asked the client, hey, you know, what kind of amp sim did you use or what was used to create the guitar tone? And unfortunately, I don't remember, but I think he said he used a combination of two different products. However, the guy's not an audio engineer, you know, unlike myself. So when he was creating the guitar tones, he was coming it as a guitar player, like a musician would, you know, what would fit my music the best. So when I got a hold of the tracks and I mixed the song, I didn't have this plugin yet. But but when I started demoing this and I used it on this mix, it just took that mix an extra 10% to the finish line. Like I thought I had a really good mix before, but once I added this to the guitars, it was like, whoa, man, I really wish I had this when I mixed this for this client because it, it was really sick. It sounded way more 3D, more life. So let's check this out. I have it in normal mode. I don't have any of the knobs turned up. I'm just gonna play it for you straight and then I'm gonna bypass it and unbypass it. It's fucking crazy. That sounds insane. Like it actually sounds like Roger was playing through kind of a real amp. And I don't know, I mean, I think I might buy it. I really like what it's doing to the mixes. Now it's more subtle on different amp sims than other ones, you know? I haven't tried it on all the amp sims I own, but I am really, really curious to see how it would work in a mix context. Like let's say someone sends me a couple tracks they're using an amp sim. I throw this on there and it just takes the guitar tone from almost there to, you know, pro level. It's a very subtle effect. You know, you have, I will admit that. I can't really see as if you're just a musician or a guitar player justify you buying this. I can definitely see this helping you get that guitar tone to the finish line, that last kind of 10 to 5% where you need it to be. So let's go ahead and solo the guitars before I end the video and let's just check it out how it sounds like that. It's so crazy, man. Like when I turn it off, it almost sounds like the guitars do this. Like they, they stop kind of like coming at me like this and they kind of start coming at me like this. Like it, almost like they flatten out into this weird two dimensionality versus like this 3D kind of thing going on. It's not a tone thing. I just really want to emphasize that. I keep saying that. I'm not hearing a change in the tone. It's just like this spatial thing going on. It's pretty, pretty cool, man. So. If you guys are having a hard time hearing this, I don't blame you. I really don't blame you. It's a very subtle effect, uh, but it's like a feeling thing. You feel it more in, you know, the way the guitar tone feels versus, you know, audibly hearing any tonal differences. Now, it's going for 40 bucks, uh, and they do offer a 14-day free trial, which is really, really cool. And I'm going to mess with it for the next two weeks because I just downloaded it this morning to try out. And I'm really going to just try to get my fingers under it, the plug-in and what it does and stuff. But for 40 bucks, I think, like I said, if you're a guitar player and a musician, you don't need this. You don't really need this. You can definitely add it to your arsenal. And if you're a very ambitious guitar player, you can, you know, create tones and then send that over with this baked into your guitar tone to your mixing engineer. However, if you're a mix engineer, I think this would be a really cool addition to your plugin list because you can get tracks that really aren't really there. You know, they're not the best, but then you add this there and then they kind of just get you to that extra 10% of where you kind of want them to be. And like, oh man, that's going to make a big difference. So that was just my quick review of the Bogger Digital RDX plugin. And if you found this video helpful, give me a like, a comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.